Hey there, Sense of Soul listeners. This is Kelly Sparta. You probably remember me from the January episode on Spirit Doctor. Shanna and Mandy and I have been talking and we're going to partner up and they're being kind enough to put out my new program. And so if you are a spiritual seeker who is further along in your process, if you are someone who is looking at all the programs that are out there and going, oh God, what? I've seen all these before. I've done this a million times. Where's the next level? Well, here's the next level. I do a program called Evolve with Sacred Energetics that is specifically for intermediate to advanced level students. It is a custom designed program where you work with me to custom design not only a program that'll fill in any gaps that you've missed along the way, but also where we work on taking you to where you want to go and what the next things are that you want to learn. So if you're interested in that, Go to mysenseofsoul.com and click on the link or hit the link in the show notes and sign up for a discovery call to see if this is going to be a good fit for you. I would love to talk to you. Welcome to the Sense of Soul podcast. We are your hosts, Shannon and Mandy. Grab your coffee, open your mind, heart, and soul. It's time to awaken. Today on The Sense of Soul, we have on Bob Doyle. Bob is known for his contribution to the film and the book, The Secret. Let's just say he is a law of attraction expert. He has been on numerous platforms, written many books, and dedicated 20 plus years to this topic. I don't know if our listeners even know this, but Shanna and I picked Sense of Soul not only because we are passionate about how we believe it's so important to bring awareness to your soul, but also because the abbreviation is SOS, which we all know means help. Today, we're hoping Bob can help us understand more about how our brain processes our experiences of reality and how this affects who we are and what we attract in our life. And we cannot wait to learn more. Bob, welcome to the Sense of Soul and please help us help. (laughs) SOS. I'm happy to be of whatever assistance I can be to you and your fine listeners. Thank you for that introduction. Oh my gosh. Well, it's such an honor to have you on. And when I say help, I'm being serious. Like this is a tough topic for me to wrap my brain around. And I guess my first question would be, is manifesting and attracting the same thing? It's it's going to be manifesting and attraction are both going to be, and this is sort of the, the key to this whole conversation. That's all a result of who you're being in the world. So you can call it that you attracted a thing. You can call it that a, you manifested a thing, but what either way you say it, it's the result of actions and energetic movement that has taken place that you have initiated to bring that thing to you. So it just depends on the context you're talking in, but in the end, it just means you're getting what you want. Okay. And this is because it's a law. Yes. And that can be confusing to people. (laughs) And one of the reasons that I talk about rewiring now, instead of so much about the law of attraction is because people are so focused on it's a law, it's a principle. What is it? How does it work? The ins and outs of it. How big should my vision board be? How many times? They're all focused on the law of attraction itself and trying to get it to work rather than the most important thing, which is who do they want to be in the world? And what mm-hmm. and what is that person going to have? And look, I'm totally guilty of this because I had my breakthroughs in the law of attraction because I had some ahas around the science of it, the physics of our thought, et cetera. So in my mind at that time, 20 years ago, I thought, okay, well, if people just understand that it's a thing, you know, that it's real and there's science behind it and they understand that then they'll have results with it like I did. But it took me 20 years to realize that that's not happening. 20 years of people selling their law of attraction courses and doing their stuff and everybody's focused on the law of attraction. What about themselves? They, they're they focused on what they want and to some extent who they want to be, but that's the only thing they should worry about. Because if they start wondering if they get to be who they want to be only if they get the law of attraction right, and there's a million people saying a million different things about the right way to do it. It's no wonder that people literally spend decades loving and following the law of attraction, but still not having the life they want. So my work now is about the important thing. Who do you want to be in the world? Why do you want to be that? What's the result of that? And how do we make that non-negotiable? Then how do we change your current way of being so that you can go from who you're being now, getting exactly what you're getting, to who you want to be getting exactly what that person will want. And that mm-hmm. is all about rewiring your brain because when it comes down to it, reality is created 
in the moment that we give a moment meaning. So whether we're enjoying this experience, I've arrived, I haven't arrived, I'll never get there, this is taking too long, that person, whatever your experience is in this moment, you're creating it in this moment automatically as your brain gives it meaning. Would you agree? Okay. I seem to manifest when I'm desperate. And then people are like, oh, the Lord provided. You know, that's kind of like in my family what they would say. I assure you that that so that is a pattern of behavior that you have acquired that now you're telling yourself as a truth, oh, no, I manifest I when I'm desperate. So what happens in that point when you reach that desperation point is magic doesn't happen. You change your behavior. Something changes in the way the urgency, the intention, the something. The it could be flight. microscopic. <laughs> and then you're getting the results. But now you're telling yourself mm. that this is how you this is who you are. Is that how uh, you want to be? No. Great. I so what would the, have to repattern that. So what would a better conversation be? What would a better thing to say? How what about you think? manifest effortlessly at the perfect time? Yeah. yeah. I oh, manifest yeah, exactly fine. what I need in the perfect time, but, uh, you know, that you're in a lot, but it's, it's all a, that you're being in alignment with who that person is. Okay. So, so the, the old stories that you have about who you are and what always happens to you, even though they feel true, you have to understand, and this is part of, this is my work is realize is, is allowing you to see how that's an autopilot behavior that you have decided is true. And it shapes the lens through which you see the entire world. And certainly what action you will take in any given moment, the meaning that you make something now is not the right time. And I'm making it mean that because, and if you trace back <clears throat> the things that actually motivate our decision making, you will arrive at the scary realization that most of us are not operating under free will on any capacity. Every decision we're making is happening on autopilot. It feels like it's conscious because we're thinking about it, but the facts, the knowledge, the information that we are referring to, to think about it could be based on complete faulty information and interpretation we made when we were three or the, okay. the because, you know, and so that shapes our, what we're calling our free will. And what we're really going for is true will, where you, where, yes, where you wake up and you see your autopilot behavior. And now you can make a more conscious choice that's not based on a lot of limitation or whatever, but truly one that is in alignment with who you tr want to be. This is the only way you're going to actually have a transformation that lasts is if you rewire your brain for it. Anybody can go to a seminar and get excited and have results for three days or a week with the neurotransmitters that were created, that were produced and the good feeling you have. However, if you don't consistently keep this new line of thinking, if you keep ping-ponging back and forth between your old way and the new way, then you'll never grow those neural pathways that make this mm -hmm. effortless, that make this permanent. You're feeding both of them. Life seems chaotic. You never quite get there. It's just one thing after another because you've got all this wiring saying two different things. And then eventually one will win out. And it's probably the wiring that you've had your whole freaking life. Okay. If you're not feeding the new. Okay. So let me be very raw and honest. After listening to that, the feeling that I got in my chest was like, oh shit. That's, this is going to be a lot of work. Like I'm going to have to do shadow work. I'm going to have to do inner child work. I'm going to have to like go back all the way to when I was a toddler and look at all the experiences. And oh my God, I've been working on myself for so long. I'm going to have to fix it. And this is probably all, you know, part of my brain that I need to repattern and rewire. Yes. And then I was also sitting there thinking, um, how society thinks today, just give me a pill and fix it. Like, can't you just hook my brain up to like a bunch of machines and like just rewire it real fast for me? As soon as that happens, I'll be very excited. I'll be happy to stop talking about this. But until I've then, I actually asked my therapist to do that. Yeah, yes, I mean, please hook so, me up. So my question is: Am I just making this harder than it truly is? Totally, absolutely. See, you made what I say mean that. Oh my God, I've got to do all this now. You've got that information because you've probably been in this conversation for so long. You talk to a lot of people, you learn about a lot of things and everybody says, you got to do this. You got to do that. It's in there. So when I say whatever it is that I said that triggered that you had this cascade of meaning that took place. Now, will you maybe need to unravel a little bit of stuff from the past? Maybe, but it shouldn't be like, that's not the focus. It, so much of this work is intuitive and you don't have to revisit it if you can more powerfully just make another choice over and over and over again.
See, this is the problem, again, with the personal development industry. We get so fixated on, on the problem itself and the processes that we can use to unroll that we're just sending all of this energy into it. This is a problem that I'm trying to fix. This is a problem. And it just yeah. solidifies that wiring. You have to be willing to have a conversation with yourself that feels dishonest about how awesome things are and how easy things come to you. Because guess what? That conversation is just as true and false as the conversation you're telling yourself about your limitations. So if you're worried about lying to yourself too late, you already are. If you've got any kind of conversation about why it's hard or why it can't be you or the limit, you're lying to yourself because this brain can be wired for just about anything, but you have to wire it that way. All these things that we do in our life that, that are automatic, like walking and talking and reading and all of these things, it didn't start that way. We had to learn it. We had to go out of our comfort zone and make a boat tone of mistakes, right? We fell, we got things wrong, but we didn't sit there and go, oh man, I fell three times trying to learn to walk. I guess the universe doesn't want it for me. Right. Mm -hmm. But that is a conversation that law of attraction conversation people have all the time. Well, we're supposed to be in the flow. And if I'm fighting the flow, I guess it, the universe doesn't want it for me. That's a freaking horrible excuse for bailing on your dreams. If you've got a passion, you have it for a reason. You're here to fulfill it and you've got the tool you need. However, it's a there's a very good chance it needs some reprogramming. So. Yes, you'll need to be consistent with it. Yes, there will be discomfort, just like everything you learn in your life. This is no big different thing. Every yeah. time you learn new information, there's that discomfort because you're at the limits of your wiring. So if you just think about learning to become a new you, like learning a new language or learning a new recipe and get all that emotion out of it, you'll, it'll, you'll serve yourself. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go back really really quick. So I don't know if you know this, you probably don't, but I have like this sticky wall where I take sticky notes of things that people have said that really stick out to me. Um, how appropriate is that? And you said, this is not free will. This is true will. That's going to go on a sticky note. I love that. I've never heard that before. I'm huge on integrity because in order for me to fight my addictions and let go of my shame and, you know, be in recovery, I had to find that integrity. So integrity means so much to me. And I believe when you're aligned with your integrity, that's when you can turn your pain into purpose. So by true will, you're saying that's where you need to start. You need to figure out what integrity means to you, what like your ethics are, what your beliefs are, who you are and who you want to be. Yes. And, and knowing that you might have some values right now that you know you want to change. For example, integrity. Like if you're a person who 60% of the time shows up for the meeting they said or does the thing they're going to do. I mean, it's not ruining anyone's life, but you know, you, you're not all in integrity. But, they, but if you know that that future version of you would have to be in, te in integrity to be and, and to get the things that they want in their life, then it's worth giving that a try. Show up. These are all things you can do. We can be on time. We can do the things we, we don't have to get the million dollars first, right? We don't have to have the life that we want in order to be those things. And in fact, we must do it the other way around. We must start to be that person so that the universe can respond. Remember, we are the universe. It's not us and the universe. And we are here. It is my strong belief. We are a physical extension of this ocean of energy that is the universe. And we're here to, so that the universe can experience itself. It has all these beautiful senses that we have, plus the emotion and the sense of passion, the desire to do something. And we were built with the ability to have it so that the universe could experience its all of it, all of the good stuff. But with that comes our ability, if we need to or choose to, to create all kinds of mess for ourselves. And, you know, we weren't born with that, the, the mess. It was programmed into us, age zero to seven. We took on the wiring, basically, of our environment, our parents, our grandparents, whoever we were around, school, society, et cetera. And that's where the lens was created. And that's what we see the world through. And that's our truth. But it's not the same truth as Bill down the street right? Or anybody else. It's unique. Now you, we share, we share some ideas about what's true about certain things, but now more than ever, we see how that people can look at the same set of events and have completely different ideas about what's true. And all of that is wiring. Okay. I'm going to ask, it seems like a difficult question. I hope it comes out right. Because of experiences in my life, my nervous system has had effects 
I think all of us, our nervous system has things that have happened to it over time. So when you talk about those senses that help you to have your experience and process your experience, what if your senses are a little off? Like my hearing's heightened, my my eyesight is is different. So so my question would be when you rewire your brain and those neurotransmitters, does it also help to reset the nervous system? Well, I have other approaches to help reset the nervous system, like in the moment, like through breath work and things like that. Yeah. Have okay. you looked into that kind of thing? Yeah, I have. I just, I was wondering, they kind of seem to go hand in hand sometimes because well, if we're yes. talking about. So I think that uh, since I'm not a brain scientist, but let's just use some logic here. Like when we have a negative thought, we might jolt or jerk or something like that, or have a muscle, you know, so we know that our body is right in tune with our emotional state, right? If we have a bad moment, we might feel a little shaky, et cetera. So we know those two are linked. And we also know that a lot of our emotional responses are totally on autopilot, right? Because we're just making meaning all of a sudden without even evaluating it. It's just, we see it, it's wired in us to respond this way. The chemicals come through our bodies and they're gonna have whatever effect that they have on our body, on our nervous system. And then of course we learn that and it becomes habitual or whatever. However, it all still starts with the wiring. So if we can change the wiring, so it's now sending different signals, it stands to reason that there's a possibility that you won't have the same emotional responses. So I would use techniques like EFT and other release techniques that we, you know, I use with all of my clients that help deal with those emotional spikes so that you can basically bring your body under some form of control that along with the breath work and things like that, that just help you sort of override that automatic response and get okay. into get into a parasympathetic state with your body so that you're more in control and not in that active, you know, right. Out of control. Okay. That makes sense. Cause recently I have been nauseous, but what I've noticed, cause I've really been trying to be present with it to figure out if I'm eating something, you know, that I can, that I can control the flares and all this stuff. But what I really noticed is that when I'm really busy, I'm not nauseous, mm. but the minute I'm able to just be present and, and remember that I have this all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, it's back. But then like something very easily can pull me out of it. Like say a high vibrational conversation. Right. So you have more of those. You're you just need to shift the energetic balance. If you know that there are things that take your mind off of that, you just have to do more of those things. It's just basic self-care, you know? And then again, just in, as in the other case, I would do some of these other tools like EFT that help that just, just you know, if it, it's all an emotional response, you're proving it to yourself, right? Yeah. It's all it, all it takes is a thought to start that process. So if we just think about it as a, as a condition of the mind and not the body, and that we can change the automatic yeah. responses of our mind simply with our intent and consistency. But we have to stop going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, or making ourselves wrong. So here's the thing. If you start to take this on and like overriding this conversation or focusing on the things that, that make that feeling go away or not so present for you, and then for whatever reason, because it's wired in there, or there's going to be triggers, you get it. The key is to not beat yourself up over it, to not put more negativity like, oh, no, here it is again. You just you notice it. Yeah, you okay. notice it with as much, with as little emotion as possible that yes, and, yeah. and, and accept it. Like, yes, of course this is happening because I got this trigger. I'm wired to do this. I don't need to make it mean anything. I'm just going to let my body do its thing. And I'm going to stay detached. Let this ride go right back to my other thing. That's mm -hmm. just a skill set that you develop over time. It's hard to do without some sort of support, obviously, because we reach our limits of our wiring and then the chemistry takes over and we justify mm -hmm. whatever negative, the, the autopilot response, we justify it. It's easy. It's our whole life. We've been wired to do it. But again, if you are committed, if you have the same commitment to being free of that and being someone who doesn't live with that, the same commitment as you did to learning how to walk or you learn these basic things, you will get there. You just have to, you make the commitment. Okay. So first step is commitment. Well, the first step is knowing where your starting point is. Okay. Because it, 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 that's going to help anyway. To understand how your autopilot wiring is in effect. Like there's some things I'm, I'm sure that we all know that, oh yeah, I do that whenever this happens. Like we're aware of some of it. 
But what we want to do is get a deeper look at what, what is it about our personality in general that causes us to respond in a way that it stops our forward motion when it comes to rewiring. And so that's why whenever I work with anybody on any level, the first thing I do is I have them take this transformation personality type quiz. It's free, okay. it's 60 seconds, and it tells them in terms of taking on transformation, personal transformation, this is the, the personality traits that you seem to have that might be stopping you. There's nothing bad or wrong with any of these traits. I mean, we're all sort of a mix of all of them, but with, most of us have a predominant one. But just even understanding what that is so that you can then recognize your autopilot behavior in the moment, that's when you have a choice. If you don't recognize it, if you, if you are truly on autopilot and basically being a robot, then you're not going to necessarily notice it mm -hmm. because, oh, this isn't a thing to notice. This is just the truth. My, uh, my response right now is absolutely appropriate. Well, that is when you need to, to wake up and notice it. So I, if anybody watching or listening can take this quiz now, and then we can talk about what the types are briefly. So oh my gosh, yes, see. let's do it. I mean, everyone loves quizzes. <laughs> okay, so yeah. this is, all they got to do is go to tptquiz.com tptquiz.com. It's multiple choice. It takes a minute. It's, 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 it's not hard or anything. It's just mm -hmm. answering questions about just how you approach transformation in general. And by the end of it, you'll get the result, which is a type. And you'll get sent a PDF that explains in depth what that type is and what to do about it. We're going to talk about this too, but what, what you can do with that information, how do you use that information to actually help you move forward in your rewiring process? So again, this has been uh, super helpful for, for me as a coach too, to know where everybody's starting with. So I know how to speak to them and can speak exactly to what the things are that were, uh, that are stopping them rather than spending, you know, all this time investigating and exploring. Right. This just cuts out so much of that time for all of us. It really helps all of us. tptquiz.com. Okay. okay. And that'll yeah. pop up the quiz right now. Yes. And then yep. when they go through the quiz, then they'll, they'll learn about the challenge, which is where I actually help people with this, uh, with all of this rewiring, but let's kind of assume that maybe they've taken the quiz or they've hit pause. Or Do it. Yeah. Cause, and I just want to, you know, let the listeners know I did it. It took me 30 seconds. It was super easy and insightful. And then I got an email from you and it, it, there's also videos that explain it. So I loved it. It was great. Oh, thank um, you very much. Yes. I forgot yeah, about the videos. I yeah, and I was a seeker, so um, I'm interested to know um, a little bit more. But yeah, let's jump into each one. Well, let's start with the seeker because it is by far the most popular one. And I think it, it makes sense if people are going to come and take my quiz, knowing I'm in the personal development industry, they've probably done a few other programs. So the seeker is a person who is absolutely committed to personal transformation and growth and being their best self. And they are so committed, in fact, that they try everything. You know, everything that comes across their desk that looks good, they go, oh, that seems good. I resonate with that. And they get into it. And then this other one comes along and it seems, oh, they promised this quicker. And oh, that guy's more famous. Let me get back to this. I'm going to try over here. I'm going to go to this seminar with Lucy next week. And oh, there's a whole other approach. And what happens, of course, is when you start this and then you start this and start this and then don't, you know, ignore this for a little while, your brain's just, it's responding to that which means that you're not really growing any permanent neural pathways. You're creating all sorts of neurotransmitters. You're creating, uh, you've got all this information competing with each other and it's no wonder your life is chaotic and you're not getting the results. Again, this is all just super logical, all of it. There's no woo woo here. We don't have to talk about <laughs> metaphysics or anything. This is the only thing people need to know about this conversation is that your brain can change. And that's just proven science. There's nothing to debate. It changes every time you learn a piece of new information. So let's get on with what do we need to do to change it? So the seeker just needs to freaking commit. They need to understand that if they've got something that was really resonating with them, to some extent, it's gonna serve them to put some blinders on, to get the full value. And that doesn't mean complete the seven day course. Now you've got to take that seven days of knowledge and extrapolate it into at least 45 days or so consistently so that the wiring can take place. Because guess okay. what? You're asking the impossible if you don't do that. Your brain needs to change in order for transformation to be lasting, for the new level of manifestation to become effortless. Because right now, you're manifesting effortlessly exactly what you've got. If you want to up-level what you're manifesting effortlessly, you have to up-level your wiring so that you're up-leveling the action you take so that you're creating more value for people and you're getting different results from the universe. Super, super practical. No woo-woo there. So that's the seeker briefly. 
how many you know four, types is that? Four, four. four. Okay, cool. Seventeen. No, I'm kidding. Four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have one question. You mentioned forty-five days, so you, on average, about forty-five days will help that rewiring start to happen. If you are consistent, it's not like okay. forty-five days. I've been in this program, but I've yeah. done it like three, right? I mean, but again, the mentality of people. It's once they get like get into a program, they the, all logic goes out the window. Well, I bought the program. It said fourteen days. I, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So yes, forty five yeah. days. And then again, that's you. I, I read all different numbers, but forty five days is kind of right in the middle. Like when I work with people, we're seeing habits change way sooner than that. It's just that in terms of actual neural pathways to be grown, so that it becomes the effortless new autopilot. That you know, we're allowing like forty five days. So, wow. okay. okay. So the next one that, that I would talk about is that it's, it's, it's a tough one for people because it's so emotional, but it's the people pleaser and the people pleaser again, loves transformation. They want to be the best selves they can be. They maybe got, they got it. Something inspired them in the world and now they're going for it. But as soon as they start going for it, they get a look from mom or from a neighbor or the, from their colleagues or from a spouse, like, what are you doing? You know, something that basically says to them, what you're doing is wrong. You know, I'm not comfortable with this or whatever. You can't do that. Basically, they're giving you this, their feedback that's based on their stuff, by the way, not nothing about you. It's 100% about their limitation. However, the people pleaser will acquiesce and say, all right, all right. Well, I, I, instead of making you uncomfortable and you uncomfortable, or you mad at me, I'll just stay right here. And what the sentence that they don't finish is, and basically sacrifice the rest of my life, the life that I'm here to have, the life that is I'm being called to each and every day, the life that is in my heart and mind that I want to pursue more than anything in the world. I'm not going to do it so that you won't give me that look or so that you won't make lunch difficult. This happens all the time right? And nobody wins. You don't win, obviously, because you don't get to have the life you want. And none of those other people that you're trying to help by making them comfortable, they don't win either. They're not comfortable. Otherwise, they wouldn't be telling you what you can't do. So the people pleaser has to have a, a whole other level of resolve and commitment to becoming who they want to be and why, because it needs to become non-negotiable, no matter what these people say. You have to be able to elevate and look at relationships in a new way, not the way that we've been taught, where it's terrible if a relationship ends. Oh, but they've been my best friend for 30 years. I can't. Yes, you can. I'll bet you if this is where you're at, the past five years have been kind of miserable. They always talk about the negative stuff. They bring you down. It's like you almost dread it. But it's 30 years. I got it. No, you don't. And there's nothing wrong with it unless you think it is, unless you make it wrong. That's all meaning. People come in and out of our lives all the time. We don't think twice about it. Sometimes we think way too much about it. The fact of the matter is when you elevate who you're being, not everyone's going to follow you. And, and no amount of coercing on your part is going to do it. The only thing that's going to help up level them possibly is you doing it you going for it and showing them it can be done. And when you get to that new place, you'll attract a whole new group of people. And these are the people who know you for who you really are, who see your exuberance and see your passion and are attracted to it and lift you up and help you sustain that way and grow. Not the people who, for whatever reason, are keeping you right here, all, everybody all uncomfortable. Mm, you know what? I used to be that. So I am a speaker too. I just took the test as well. I changed though, because I definitely used to be that people pleaser, mm -hmm. but I did a lot of work. That was really a big part of my journey was that I was breaking that pattern. It was a generational pattern. So that's great. Freedom from that one is a big one. So I'm moving up, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Moving okay. closer, closer to who you want to be. You definitely knew <laughs> that you wanted to be free of that type of behavior. But I want to your... be free of the seeker too. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's again, I think you're, there's nothing wrong with being a seeker. It's just that at some point that seeker needs to calm He's down so that they can result, you know, have the result because we're always right. going to subconsciously be looking for the next thing because it is, and this is, a, this is very important for people to know who have any ideas about worth or deserving the universe of which we are a part. It's very nature is to expand. It is constantly expanding, always growing. We are a part of that 
It is our nature to expand and grow. We look at nature, expand and grow. It's obvious. And if we don't expand and grow, if we have something inside us that we know is there to grow and to be brought forth and we don't do that, that's when depression sets in. That's when you get resentful and angry and become somebody you, that nobody wants to be around. If you can't express who you're here to be, it's going to show up in disease. It's going to show up in mental issues, all kinds of things. So, but we've learned all these reasons why we can't do it. And that's what I'm here to do is help you unlearn whatever that nonsense is and replace it with things, which is as close to the truth as we can get that you've got the potential. You have the potential to move into being that person, but you also have to have that commitment. So people pleaser, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Shall we move on? Yes. Okay. The next one is, and this was what I would have tested at had the test been available, is a skeptic. So again, being skeptical is in general, just being skeptical about certain things is not a bad thing. It can keep you from doing all kinds of ridiculous stuff. However, if you define yourself as a skeptic, and that's just like, you know what I'm talking about. This is a very specific, this isn't a person who is capable of being skeptical about things. This is a person whose nature it is to doubt everything, right? Mm -hmm. And go, I, I don't know about that. Now, the, the skeptic may, like I did, really want to grow really be fascinated with this whole idea that we can create our reality. But the skeptic in me needed to see the science, something. I can't just read these metaphysical books and everybody going, oh, it feels so good, you know, and that be it. I needed something. So I got that. So that skeptical part of me was fulfilled. But I've also learned over the course of time that if you identify yourself as a skeptic like that, then you're also, in addition to not doing stupid things, you're probably going to miss out on all sorts of wonderful opportunities to grow, to get to where you want to go. But if you categorically say no to everything, this is the subconscious thought of a skeptic like I'm talking about, even without thinking about it, their first thought when presented with any sort of opportunity like about transformation is, why won't this work for me? And when you ask those questions, those are the answers you will get. Wow. So if you want, if a skeptic wants to grow, they need to use that intelligence, the same intelligence, the same logic. This is not, see, a, the skeptic considers themselves to be very intelligent, very logical, very rational, and they don't want to be wrong about stuff. This is very important to them, right? But I'm saying that the skeptic can use that same discernment, but ask themselves a different question, which is just as logical, which is, how could this work for me? Okay. So a skeptic isn't like fear-based. I was thinking it was more fear-based. You're saying they're actually very intelligent. It so could be, it, but but the, okay. but still, see, but but intelligence can mask a lot of fears, cover up a lot of fears. Look how intelligent I am. I can okay. talk right over the fact that I'm petrified of advancement. I'm petrified of growth, but I've got all this stuff I can say about it. Okay. Yeah. It has nothing true. to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, they definitely can be fear-based as well. And that's probably, you know, that's probably their protection mechanism because a lot of skeptics who are like I'm talking about, they're that way because they got burned or they got hurt. You know, they had, a, they had event or in a series of events that taught them that it's safer to be skeptical, which isn't true, but it was true for them because they happen okay. to have a series of events like that. Yeah. No, it's sad. Okay. Okay. So the last one is the wizard. And I think, I, I, and it, it seems like it would, that a wizard and a skeptic couldn't co coexist, but I would consider myself that too. So I was a skeptic, but I wanted to believe in the magic of things, you know, like the, like the, all I have to do is put it on the vision board or think these thoughts or visualize, and then energy will just move and it will just manifest right now. I'm not, that happens. It occurs like that sometimes for people, but it's when you depend on that, that you mostly get disappointed because the wizard, like I'm talking about, again, loves the law of attraction conversation because of the vibration and the energy and the invisibleness of it and the attraction process. And I'm speaking things into being, and I'm very conjuring, very alchemical. I'm putting this on my vision board and I'm bringing it into being. However, if that's all they're doing, the odds that they're going to get that stuff are very low because they haven't changed anything about how they're being in the world in a way that's going to bring those things to them. If they're just mm -hmm. presenting them that they want all the success and all of this stuff and they're just sitting there, you know, or very yeah. little action or not the action that they know they need to take because a wizard tends to hide behind the universe has got me. I don't need to be uncomfortable. The universe has got me. This is going to be a pleasant thing. It's going to be a pleasant. I'm going to flow. But you can also flow through discomfort. 
it's part of it. You know, you can flow through all of the ebbs and tides and the extreme stuff. You can still flow through it. Discomfort doesn't mean you're not in the flow unless you get stuck on it and stop the flow. Yeah. They always say the miracles happen in the discomfort. Yes. I just got done saying that's how I manifest. (laughs) Yes. Well, yes, you can change that. You know, it's time to take some time to figure out what that would look and feel like on a day-to-day basis, change your relationship with time and deadlines or whatever it is. That's what I was going to say. I feel like I have done this in some areas. Like I am very confident in doing this with some things, Hmm. but not with other things like money. So that's interesting. So that means there's just some wiring around money that you can look at. And sometimes again, it's not about you have to go back and do all this work to uncover. It's all just intuitive feelings. And especially with some of the techniques like emotional freedom techniques with just tapping. And it's again, very intuitive stuff. You just go with what comes up. You don't worry about if it's right. You just let it process through the technique. And that's when like the brain, your brain will unlock and you'll just be shown things. Synchronicity synchronicities you mean showing up yeah well i mean that again is going to be the result of you being consistently this new you all all the the synchronicities while they seem like magical they are logical yes there's energy exchange and all of those cool invisible things but we don't need to get hooked up on that it's just like we don't need to understand how gravity is pulling the glass down into the ground when we let go of it all we have to do is let go And that's it. We don't have to study it, take courses, any of it. We don't have to visualize it. It just happens. And if we just be who we're here to be without the limitations stopping us from taking the action that we know we need to take, and maybe we don't know the action, but we take it anyway and we get some feedback and go, okay, that's not the result I wanted. We don't say the universe doesn't want it for me. We say, thank you for giving me that feedback. Now I have more information. I can go a little further, go a little further, go a little further. Every invention on this planet took many, many iterations. If, if the inventors of this world had approached their inventions like we approach personal transformation, there would be no technology. Okay. What about resistance then? Yeah, resistance is wiring too. But okay. that's when I bring in the release techniques like EFT. The, the resistance is just the wiring that gives you the complicated thoughts about why you can't do something or gives you the negative feeling. And most of it is subconscious. It's just okay. a thing triggers it and it all just fires based on information that it's had for sometimes decades. Hey, Sense of Soul listeners. Sorry for the interruption, but we have some exciting news to share. Shanna and I have decided to offer an affiliates page on our website to our guests that we have had on. Then it makes it easy for you, our listeners, to find programs and professionals that align with you. Yes, it's so easy. Just go to our website, mysenseofsoul.com, and on our homepage, click the Network of Lightworkers Affiliates. Then scroll and simply click on your favorite guest. From there, use the code under the guest that they have made particular to them and sign up or simply tell them that Sense of Soul has sent you. We have been so excited to announce our new ongoing partnerships with some of our amazing guests. Sense of Soul, Shan and I will earn a commission for our endorsement and recommendation to their product or their service from this affiliates page. Your purchase will help support Sense of Soul in our purpose, bringing amazing episodes twice a week to our listeners all around the world. We want to take this opportunity to thank you, our participating affiliates and listeners for your support. Oh, and don't forget that we have a Patreon. Patreon is a platform where we have special exclusive content for Patreon members. Just download the free Patreon app and search Sense of Soul. Then pick your tier that resonates best with you. Unlocking exclusive content like Mandy and I's exclusive mini series only on Patreon. Our monthly Sense of Soul Sacred Circles. Patreon also has exclusive merch. We have polls on fun topics, bloopers, workshops, and even early releases of episodes. It is also an amazing way to build our community and interact intimately with our listeners. Check it out. We love and appreciate you all so much. Now back to our amazing guest. I'm surprised I wasn't wizard. After you describing wizard, I'm surprised I wasn't. Because I'd be like, nope, that's resistance. The universe doesn't want me to have it. So I guess I don't get it. Well, like, yes. So please let go of that. 
Because why would why would you be born with these passions? It's Look nature. around at nature. It's not some freaking accident that we like the things we like, yeah. right? That we're drawn to these things naturally, that we get inspired by certain things. That's our gift. And we've been given what we need to actually explore and pursue and experience on a grandest scale these things that we are passionate about. The only reason we don't do it is because our wiring stops us from taking this action. We don't believe we can do it. We don't know how to do it, we tell ourselves. Well, you learn how to do it. That's how people learn anything. They, they, everybody starts with a not knowing. And then you just decide, I, it is worth learning. No matter what I have to do to learn it, no matter how many years it takes, I'm not going to wake up because I got a vision board with the knowledge on how to do this thing. If I want to do this thing in the world, I have to be committed to learning how to do it. That's what that person in the future would do. That's what they did to get there. They didn't wave a magic wand. They earned it. They learned the thing and they were passionate about it. They enjoyed the process, even with the discomfort, because they knew that when they learn it, they can now be the person that they're here to be, that they've been called to be, and they'll be wired to do it. And it'll feel effortless. And then they'll have true joy and meaning in their lives instead of this, well, I don't have time to learn that. And what are you talking about? So you just, so the rest of your life, you're just going to not do what you want to do, not even be on the journey for it because it might take two years and two years from now when you could have taken the two years to be there well and you're still right here how's that going to feel i feel like manifesting and law of attraction has been very misunderstood people are like in that wizard position they yeah. they just think if they just think it or meditate on it for a few minutes a day or driving to the walmart parking lot and sit there and just manifest a parking spot that it's always going to happen and if it doesn't then screw it, it right and, and that is prevalent thinking and with that kind of wiring in our brains, it's no wonder we're, we're not getting the results. Again, it's just logical. It's not the universe punishing us. It's just we're not consistently being a person who's going to get the results that we want. We can't just do it one day and then go back the next day because nobody knows what to do with that. You have to just own it and be right. it and take that action. And again, make the mistakes and learn the things. And before you know it, you'll be that expert. You'll be that person. You'll be it. And the law of attraction will just work. All the energy will flow the way it's supposed to. Any of the little miracles that need to happen will happen. It's about you responding as you when the stuff shows up. Because we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, what the universe is going to bring us. You know, that's where the magic stuff happens. It's like oh, the universe goes, oh, well, this guy has the desire to do this. We're going to pair these up. We don't need to think about that. All we need to know is when this person shows up with the thing that we need to take action on, that we take action on it, that is consistent with the person we want to be. Not from any fear that we have of the old place, uh, of the old way of being, but powerfully in this new way. And with every decision and every action we take is that, we solidify that wiring a little bit more. I am such a visual person, Bob. Is there any way you can give us a story of this? A, a story you know, of rewiring? Yeah. I was actually going to ask if you could give an example of yourself. I will. So in 2012, I got divorced and that was a major shakeup. That's in the midst of the secret. Like the secret had been out for, I don't know, seven years or something like that. And then my marriage ends. And so that's, that's a mental, you know, there's a lot going on in there. And so I started to doubt my value and I started thinking more negatively. I was like, what is my direction? And, you know, if I can't do, you know, that stuff that would normally come up in that. And then the divorce wasn't great. And so there was a lot of tension over the course of years and a lot, just a lot of just bad feelings that were just ongoing. And I was wired like hard to let that negativity, if I got an email or something like that, it, that would be my week you know, certainly a few days, like I was just, I was wired to worry and I was wired to go to the negative place, even with my message. Now, this is before I was teaching rewiring per se. I mean, this was full on law of attraction stuff. I knew the impact that that was having, but I wasn't, I just wasn't finishing connecting the dot. You know, I was still like, well, I'll visualize this or whatever, but I was allowing myself to go into those feelings and I justified it. That was the key. One day I woke up and it was actually after reading the book, Science of Getting Rich, which is 100 years old, doesn't mention neuroplasticity at all, but it reawakened me to the importance of being consistently this person I want to be. And yet my takeaway was I don't have the luxury of basking in negative thinking just because I think that it's right or that I should be worrying about it because that's the only way to solve a problem, whatever. I saw that that was absolutely destroying the quality of my life. If an email can take away my week, we've got a problem. 
and and I've got all these tools and everything. So it was like, okay, what I got was I'm reading this email and I'm making all this meaning, right? This is when I created my reality, but I'm just connecting a bunch of dots based on the past and extrapolating a future that hasn't even happened yet. And it's only going to happen that way if I continue to be the person I've been being. So how do I change the future? of this situation. I have to change who I'm being. And one of the first things I knew I had to do was let go of this negative reaction because it was taking me out of every part of the game of my life. And I realized I'm just making meaning and it doesn't change anything of the situation. It just makes it more miserable. It makes me more contentious. It makes me more defensive. It makes me whatever. So I just decided to try starting that day to be the person who I could just look at it and, and notice the reaction and decide not to go there. And I'm telling you, that seemed impossible. That whole thing, if you had said it before the rewiring conversation, I'd be like, I've been trying, I've been trying. But just yeah. realizing that, wow, I'm really just making this unconscious choice. I'm going to make a conscious choice as uncomfortable as it is. And it's going to bring up all my stuff about how I should be worried about this and just realize that's all interpretations and it took practice. But then I just woke up one day and I realized I don't have that anymore. If I get the email, I'll have that little, I'll see the name or whatever. And there's that little juice of chemical that just comes out, but I can immediately override it and it's over. May not seem like a big deal, but if you have anything in your life that takes you out of the game, whether it's something like that or anything else, that is the result of a mindset shift, that something that happens in your brain, then that's where this rewiring can be so powerful. When you can see and visualize your life free from that. And what would it be like to be able to just read my email and not worry about and carrying it around? And how much lighter would I feel? How much more productive and how much more creative could I be if I just didn't make that decision, mm -hmm. which is all it was? Yeah, that's what I did. That's how I end up staying in the relationship that I am. Exactly what you just said. Yes. You know, sometimes it's hard for me to explain that to people because they, they want to know exactly how I did that. But I did just that. I decided to stop counting how many beers someone got or stop being involved in what they were doing and focused my energy back into me and just refuse to be that person. Yes. It's not necessarily a walk in the park, but if you're ready, if you really get to that point where you want that emotional freedom and you're aware, like I, I'm fortunate, you're fortunate. We're in the personal development conversation to some extent. We yeah. know there are choices. Not everybody does. I and knew I rewired my brain. I just didn't know exactly how I did that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there was, and there's no going back. And like you said, sometimes maybe little bits and pieces may come back. You know, and then I'm like, no, yeah, I don't worry about that kind of yeah, stuff. It's not that you're <laughs> giving yourself a lobotomy, right? And taking out the memory. You will, you will remember yeah. the event, but it just doesn't have that charge on you. You can use it as a learning exercise. You can yes. use it as contrast or whatever, but it doesn't have to be your kryptonite. I think this message is so important. You're right. I know I get why you're so passionate now because we can do coaching. We can do read all these self-help books, watch a million Netflixes and listen to podcasts. And we can change who we are, but I don't think people know that it's truly changing you and your yeah. brain and yes. your brain. Yes. That's the important I, part. If anybody so, has any doubt about this whole changing your, who you are, by the way, is like, think about who you were five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I promise you, you're going to see major differences in who you're just being. And it probably happened on autopilot, unconsciously, as you got new information of the world changed and you got new attitudes and opinions, et cetera, the basically an autopilot shift of being. But again, you so, and if it can happen on autopilot, you can certainly do it intentionally. I wonder if that's why in Alcoholics Anonymous, you have to do, it's highly recommended, 90 meetings in 90 days because they want you to, you basically, they're trying to help you rewire your thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like it's consistent. Yes, it has to be consistent. It can't be something that you're just trying. And if you're just trying it, it's because you're not, you haven't inspired yourself enough. So a lot of my work is getting people to tap into something that really inspires them because many people don't give themselves the permission to think big and to, to have a grand vision for themselves. Yeah. They think very, very small or modestly, or they try to think realistically, which of course is understandable and based on their wiring. So it's not right. about making yourself wrong because you can't, basically wherever you are right now, it's perfect. 
And you hear that all the time. And, but I don't mean that in some sort of spiritual, soulful way. It's just, it's exactly the result of all the information that you've gotten in your life right now. It's, it's yeah. logical that you're right here. Now, you know, new information, you know, now that you have more control over the wiring up here so that you could really change your life. It may be confronting. It may seem too big. It may seem whatever, but is it, does it seem appealing? Would you be willing to take it on? Would you be willing to start this rewiring process and just look for little quality of life changes where you don't get triggered by this person at lunch anymore, whatever, just that can have this huge impact on your life. When you realize how you can be free of some one emotional response, then you realize, wow, I could be free of another and another and another, and I can create brand new emotional responses. When you really wake up to, oh my God, I truly have this reality creation machine right here. It's got a lot of cluttered programming in it. I'm going to do the work to get rid of that, but I'm going to replace it with really awesome, powerful programming. And I'm going to do it all the time because it, number one, it feels good to do it. Why wouldn't we do it to think about this, you know, feeling good and seeing ourselves. So it feels good to do it. And we part of part of our process and the challenge, our balance loving challenge is this daily. It's up front. And at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, it's this visualization of seeing yourself in the day ahead, knowing the situations you've got ahead, looking in advance at where might I go into autopilot wiring that doesn't serve me. I'm going to have lunch with Mary. And every time I do, blah, blah, blah. how about this time I'm this instead. And you run it and you run it and you run it with full emotion, with as much clarity as you can okay, for as long as you want. And then you've rehearsed it. So now you're there with Mary and she makes that face and you know what to do. You know who to be. It doesn't have to trigger you anymore. How successful is your program? Well, that's very, very subjective, but I can tell you that <laughs> in, in terms of like the response I'm getting is unlike anything I've gotten because it is so fast. You see, with like law of attraction, let's say they take a law of attraction course and they're learning all the stuff. They're spending all this time learning to visualize and get the vision board. And then three weeks in, they go, I manifested a cup of coffee. I visualized it this morning and I got it. Three weeks. This is just a hypothetical example. You can come into my program and five minutes later have learned to catch an autopilot response, make a huge, make a, make a, a, a different choice and start to dramatically shift the direction of your life. That's the beginning. So you can see results so fast by just taking a different action and allowing it and being from that place of being that person. So that's why I'm so excited. That's why this is really the only thing I'm doing aside from coaching and stuff and speaking is that this is the most effective way of, of transformation I have ever been a part of because it's just so direct. We don't have to learn a bunch of stuff. We don't have to learn a bunch of science. I'm not teaching parts of the brain and here's what happens here because you know what? You don't need to know that either. And that's just like teaching the ins and outs of the law of attraction or whatever. All you need to know is your brain can change. It changed it into what it is now, mostly on autopilot. And I want to show you how you can go out of autopilot and manually drive this thing where you want to go. Shanna, you've said it before. You know, we always let our brains control us instead of learning to control our brains. So this whole autopilot thing, it's about us being the pilot and, you know, saying hello. And, and so if I'm hearing this correctly, Bob, you're, you, it's, it's really a lot, it's a lot about awareness. It's all about, that's the first step is getting into awareness, awareness of the autopilot and going into observation mode. Like when you're in that situation and you're triggered, it's just learning to stop for a second, mm -hmm. kind of rise up and look and without, without emotion, without age, without time, without judgment, without anything. It's just the essence of you, your consciousness, being aware of the situation. Okay, this happened, this happened. And now I, this body of mine is wanting to respond like this. And I know what's going to happen if I do what if I did this instead? The thing I rehearsed, I'm now going to put that into place. I'm going to say this instead of that, and I'm going to get a different result. I have to, because I'm doing something different. So let's see how this all plays out. Go. Can this be used for bad? The selfish well, look, nurse, what do you, narcissistic I mean, person, you know. But, but this is <laughs> what narcissists do. This is yeah. their wiring. They, yeah, they okay. are telling themselves that. So, I mean, it's obviously, okay. but I think that for all uh, my belief, with just the little I understand about narcissism, there's a wound somewhere, right? I also see that once you're a narcissist, it's pretty difficult to untangle that wiring, but I'm not gonna rule it out. But I'm just saying it is wiring. 
to a degree. I mean, there may be some genetic whatever, but I'm saying that if we're really here following our passions and all of that, I don't think we're going to have the natural desire that feels good to be this controlling person. That's not going to feel great. It's going to be tainted with something, right? We'll know. So I know I'm kind of taking you back really fast, but who is Bob when you were growing up and who is Bob now today? Right. Well, it's same Bob. My, what drives me at the core is the same is creative self-expression. Like I talked about before, Mm -hmm. if we're not expressing ourselves creatively, whether that's through our job, through our parenting, through a creative endeavor, like drama or art or something, if we don't do that, we feel compressed and we feel sad and we feel depressed. And that was my life. I could not settle in. I, I, I grew up always wanted to be in broadcasting and being a goofball and doing voices and voiceover and that kind of thing. I did it for seven years, but I was in a major market and I didn't have the creative freedom to be as goofy as I wanted to. And so in my <laughs> immature way, I said, fine, I'm out of here. and I'm going to go do something else. Goofy over here. Yeah. So I jumped around from all into all sorts of careers, trying to find something where I could express myself creatively. None of them really was the thing, but I picked up great things from all of them that have, you know, come into this, but it was my last corporate job that I was in for four years. That was just sucking my soul in life. I mean, it was just the epitome of what I'm talking about here that I finally just quit, even though I didn't have any safety net. And I'm like, I'm going to make some sort of business work. Cause I know I'm a terrible employee. Cause I just want to do things my way. Wham. I mean, I knew this about my myself. So it was like I entrepreneurship had to be it. And so I had this really terrible summer of of horrible financial situation because I didn't have any money coming in. I was uh, we had all kinds of debt. I had a young family. And then as I tried all of these logical things and businesses to start based on my skill set that should have worked, nothing was working. That's when I started to go, okay, well, what's the invisible cause here? What is it that I can't see that's making this stop? And that's what led me down the metaphysical path and eventually to the law of attraction and so on. So ultimately it just had me look at my thought process more and what I was thinking Mm -hmm. into being and who I was being. So I, yeah. Mm. What do you teach your kids? Do you have kids? Yes, I do. I have three Yeah. and they, you know, my daughters were like, I'm going to say like seven to 10 or something like that when the secret came out or whatever. My, my answer to that is always the same. I mean, yes, you can show them the secret or whatever, but you got to do it. You have to show them that you can yeah. be who you want to be. There's that's the only way. And you can all day, you can give them the other stuff to supplement the things that you're showing them and saying, but it's not enough, obviously, just to put it in front. Now, having said that, mm-hmm. now that the secret's been out for 15 something years, I'm actually getting interviewed by people who were kids when the secret came out whose parents showed it to them and they saw it, you know, 50 yeah. times or whatever. But if they're, if they're being shown it that much, their parents are probably into the conversation too and leading by example. Mm-hmm. But what I'm seeing is these kids who are so freaking plugged in, so present, so aware, mm-hmm. so sure. conscious about things. I mean, yes, we've got others who aren't, but I am running across like kids who I think yeah. are extraordinarily evolved spiritually Agreed. and have a concept of who they can be in this world and are going for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we could talk just a little bit about this, that maybe some of the repatterning isn't even from this lifetime. It could be very genetic. Do you feel that way? Like I said, I was, I felt like it was breaking a generational pattern Mm -hmm. with my self-worth and doing some ancestry work really explained why, you know, we had this so deeply in our genetics. Um, Because I mean, my daughter, I mean, I didn't teach her half of the things Like she's very, she's a perfectionist and she gets so mad at herself when she doesn't be perfect. We have never, ever, you know, asked perfection from her. Absolutely. There's some genetics at play and things that fire off chemistry and make things a big deal to us. And, you know, all of those little things that give us our unique personality, et cetera. So it's, what are you going to do with those traits? I mean, all of those traits that can be the perfectionist trait, it can be honed into something incredible, right? But that's that's the raw trait. It's like, it needs to be perfect. So with maturity and some guidance and so on, they can see that that tendency can be a superpower, but it can also be a hindrance if they don't get things done. And perfectionist would be another, like a type, you know, it's like, I'm not going to do this until it's perfect, or I'm not done until it's perfect. And we have to just shake up to reframe what perfection is and and where they got that idea and so on. But- Yes, I definitely some genetics at play, but I still think you can work with all of it. Epigenetics proves that, right? Yeah. 
I mean, I think just this conversation and you explaining this is already starting some rewiring in my brain because you've brought an awareness to it, which has brought an awareness to me right now in my thoughts as I'm sitting here. Yeah. So it's already set in. I'm sitting here thinking like I've been thinking negative things off and on. Like I'm a seeker and I have like all these ideas and I, and me and my husband were actually talking about this the other day. Like I do something and then I set it down and then I do something else and I set it down. Like yes. that's my cycle. Yes. Um, and I have a hard time committing to one because maybe it's fear or maybe it's this pattern I've been telling myself that, oh, I don't know it. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, it probably <laughs> extrapolates to some sort of fear because what if I tried to learn it and I couldn't or I did it wrong and then people didn't like it? I mean, it it probably that whole starting stuff and the fear of completion or whatever is generally some sort of bank fear about how it's going to be received. What if people mm-hmm. don't like it and I spend all this time and then it's about your value. It's like, well, this was I love doing this. This was an expression of me and people don't like it. So it must mean that about me. So I'd rather just not finish it so there can be no judgment and I'm safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can relate to that one. Yeah. The key is go for it anyway, get the responses that don't feel good. And you're either going to learn something valuable from it. If you'll allow yourself to, and realize that, well, maybe I don't know everything about everything about how people are going to receive this. So it is either going to be like, yes, I can observe that feedback and know that I can get something valuable from this, or you're going to go, okay, that's about you. I'm not teaching you to deflect every, every little piece of criticism, but you can sometimes feel that, okay, well, their feedback is more about them and they're not my target. That's the other thing. Whenever you put stuff out, be very aware of who's giving you the feedback. Do you care? Are they your target? Are they going to benefit from you or are they just going to criticize you? It's like, you don't just tell everybody and take everybody's feedback. You tell the people who you want their feedback, the people you want to help. And then that feedback means something. But not just, you know, if you put it out there to the massive public, you're going to get all kinds of stuff. I mean, before The Secret went um, like mainstream on DVD and it was just online, everybody who saw it was basically a fan already because they were all on the mailing list of people who were, you know, were in the film. So they were in the conversation. It was when they said, hey, family member, friend, you need to see this, that we started getting, you know, different opinions. And so... There were people who were very anti-secret, still are today, think it's a bunch of whatever. And then there's people who still watch it a hundred times a year or whatever. But I mean, don't you feel like everyone's energy is going towards something? I mean, it just kind of blows up, right? I mean, like, just like the fear of COVID in some way. Yes. Yes. You know, we get this mad. mass. Right. Yes. But it's still, when it comes down to the individual's experience of it, Yeah. Okay. it's still their own personal wiring. Now they may be wired to get into the mass mentality and we see yes, those people okay. and we others we see other people who are wired so to just in the like, universe we're all the universe or or yeah i mean it's just we're all responding differently but it's all still based on our i mean we may fall into groups of people who respond a certain way but it's still our own individual wiring that's determining what we are doing you know what what i wanted to ask you if you may be able to tie this in but what do you think about placebo effects oh i think it's absolutely a thing because you're wiring Again, it's, it's your wiring, your wiring, your body can create so much chemistry, like every freaking drug you can buy, your body can basically create the natural version of it. So right. depending on how you direct, I mean, the mastery you have over your mind and the ways mm-hmm. that you do or do not limit how things move across. I mean, I certainly believe that anything like that is possible. So that's almost like kind of proves thought rewiring in many ways. You know, or it's an example of it. It's it's, well, it's an example. It's an example of of how powerful we are, and how your wiring can flow and create things like healing and things like that with intention or or lack of better information. If you believe this is the thing that's going to help you, your body is ready to accept it in every way, shape, or form. You know, those types of things can certainly happen. So that's exactly what I'm trying to grasp from this conversation for myself, because I know, and I do believe in placebo. I do believe in the power of healing that we have this because I have witnessed this and I am completely in agreement with it. My brain is wired now to believe this, to accomplish it, to, you know, be victorious in it. I now I need to take how I believe in that, my belief in that you know, with all of my being and put that into the areas where I'm limiting myself in belief. First of all, I like the word knowing way better than belief. And I always have, and it's just because knowing is a, is a total certainty. Okay. And and belief is, it feels a little soft, you know, it It just feels, it feels changeable. 
and mm-hmm. and and even the knowing is is changeable but yeah. knowing if you if you know something you're going to have it with more certainty so the same thing i mean that's always been my thing about the law of attraction it's not something i believe in i know that it is it just isn't yeah. necessarily what everybody is out there marketing it as it's certainly not something that deserves so much of the attention that you're not you know you're not changing your life mm-hmm. yeah. Our listeners are truth seekers. They're seekers like us. And we go down some rabbit holes sometimes that, uh, oh my God. I mean, we're talking like months, days where we just go missing. I know you've been there. Sure. Um, I think it's so important that you said, it doesn't matter uh, how the brain's working. It doesn't matter. All you need to know, listeners, is that you can change your brain and your rewiring. Remember that people, because if I know our listeners, they're going to be jumping off and they're going to try to figure out what part of the brain lights up and how the rewiring happens. It doesn't matter because that's how me and Shanna are too. The reality of it is we stand in our own way. We make things like I did from the beginning of this conversation harder than they really are. Right. You don't need to know all those ins and outs and (laughs) and it's a distraction. If I could just know this, then it'll work. No, no, it'll work right now. Just freaking change your thought, you know, let's just play with it and understand that it's not going to feel easy all the time. The old wiring is going to keep trying to come in, keep trying to come in, keep trying to come in. And every time it does, you say, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I'm getting closer and closer to moving past this. It is not an area. It's not to be frustrated by when you get uncomfortable. It's to celebrate. Yeah. I know. I always tell people that when they bring up the awareness of, of even just the fact that, you know, it's there, I'm like, for shit, you're already on step one. You know, it's there. The progress is the biggest part. Yeah, but you got to be careful with those people can also say, and that's who I am. It's there Uh and that's my story. And this is why I get limited. It's a big deal when they get their aha moments about, oh, that's why I am this way. Uh That's why I am this way. And they start saying, I am this way. And that's not the point either. Okay. Um, 45 You're days. Awesome. Yeah. Your energy just like is pouring out of you. Your passion is pouring out of you. My vibration has completely raised since I've been on with you. You can feel it when you talk. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing that energy with us. That is so nice of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Very much. And I think that I need, I really do I need to look into your program. I need to, my son to look into your program or maybe both of us together. The thing about the program is it also has the community element. So you're in there with a bunch of other people who are in various stages yeah. of their 45 days or beyond. Most people go continue, but the point is that it's so nice to, to know that others are in there with you and to have that community because a lot of us yeah. where we are right now out in the world, we're at that point where we may be surrounded by people who don't quite get it yet, who aren't quite on that page, who might slow us down, particularly if we're people pleasers. So to be in an environment where you're getting constant coaching and daily support, and you know what to do every day of those 45 days, and there's a certain amount of accountability and you're earning points and all sorts of other fun things that your brain likes, that's what makes the program more effective because it's not just here, take this program, I'll see you in 45 days. It's like, here's this program, I'm seeing you every day, every day. There's something yeah. going on for me new. I think the one thing I'm also taking away is this sounds fun to me. Now that we've talked about it at the beginning, I was sitting in, oh shit, I got to go back and do inner child right. work. Oh my God, this sounds fucking miserable. I've done enough work in the last, you know, whatever decade. And now my energy is shifting after talking to you about it and realizing that the simplicity, it sounds fun. And shouldn't it be fun? Shouldn't it be yeah. fun to design our dream life? That should be the most fun thing. If we've got time on our hands, that's what we should be doing. But what's really fun is the freedom from the autopilot that, that that's, hasn't served you. Yeah. When you really feel like, oh my God, I mastered that. When I realized it was slow, but I just realized one day, wow, I'm free from this thing that I thought I was going to be forever. You know, so that was to me, it was very, just showed me very profoundly what can be done in a fairly short amount of time. Yeah, when I was able to free myself from my first repatterning, I I can't even explain to you. It was the first time I ever felt freedom in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can keep and, doing and it. And I remember you called me and you said it's it, I, you were trying to describe your freedom, Shanna, and how you That's felt. So and, and then you kept saying, and what's really interesting is that when I freed myself and shifted, everyone around me did as well. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how other people change when we shift inside? Yeah, yeah. it is amazing. And that's when I really, truly felt very unfuckwithable for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, 
be amazing. All right, Bob, where can our listeners find you? Tell them again about where they can go for this quiz, because I think that's really important and definitely the gateway into this program because it's fun. So, yeah. Yeah, So tptquiz.com for transformation personality type quiz.com. We'll get you right to the quiz. And then for just all things Bob, you can go to meetbobdoyle.com. You can also get to the quiz from there. I also have to add in your videos. I love your humor. You're just super laid back. I I was watching one this morning, like at the intro, you were like, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good whatever. Like you're just super laid back and you're funny. I enjoyed watching your videos. They're not just dry. Like, yeah. So your personality comes out. (laughs) Well, that's, you know, it's actually just uh, quickly, that was an important part of my story was post secret moving from this person who I thought I needed to be, which was Bob Doyle from the secret being a very particular way, like my colleague leagues to allowing my true nature, that broadcaster, the goofball to come out, you know, and to find a way to share this message and still be me. So that was was a definite part of my journey. So I appreciate all of what you just said. And now it's time for break that shit down. If you, if they can just get the truth that if they want to change their experience of reality, that they have to change who they're being, if they can see the logic in that if I change my behavior, if I change what I put out there, then the feedback I get will change if they can get that part. And if they can understand that their brain can change and it will change in alignment with what you're doing most consistently, then they can see the possibility, the true possibility of profound change and transformation in their life. So I challenge every listener to at least take on seeing if like they didn't take the quiz, take the quiz and then see what it's like to catch yourself in autopilot behavior. You don't even have to do anything with it. Just notice it and see how many times you catch yourself during the course of the day. It will be very eye-opening and hopefully then you will revisit this idea of changing it so that you can have, you can have a life that just flows the way you want it to, with the results that you want it to, based on just the logical outcome of you being a different person. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'm so glad we finally connected. Likewise, anytime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you will come back next week. If you like what you hear, don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe. Thank you. We rise to lift you up. Thanks for listening.